تبارك الله رب العالمين الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي جعل ذكره طمأنينة للقلوب وجلاء لها عنرين الضنوب ومطردة لوسواس الخناس المكذوب والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد الداعي إلى كل فعل محبوب وأمر مطلوب وعلى آله وأصحابه المقتفين سبيله على خير أسلوب أما بعد فيقول رب تبارك وتعالى في كتابه المنزل أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل للمؤمنين يغضوا من أبصارهم ويحفظوا فروجهم ذلك أزكى لهم إن الله خبير بما يصنعون Allah says say to the believers lower your gaze and protect your chastity your, your private parts and for that is better and purer for you and Allah is most aware of all that you do continuing from where we left off last week we are on our 12th session on building on the series of building concentration and khushu in salah attention in salah last week we talked about the need for niyyah intention and that intention is an action of the heart and not necessarily the tongue the tongue is an aid for intention but it is the configuration of the heart which is intention and we talked about the distinction that intention distinguishes between two types of activity habitual activity and that of worship ibada and ada and that there is need to make intention when you approach salah such that you do not begin the salah and then think about the intention you should have an intention before starting the salah and not only that but knowing which salah you're praying and what degree rutab the type of salah whether it's sunnah or nafil of or fard and also we talked about needing a d- demarcation line in order to mark that transition from the zone of ada the zone of or mundane activities into the zone of ibadah and that demarcation line both mentally and physically is that of takbiratu tahrim or tahrima the takbiratu tahrima is the one where ihram when you say allahu akbar that's the red line from there on things that were halal become haram you cannot talk you cannot eat and likewise we cannot indulge the dunya our mundane dunya activity in salah mentally as well we are required to keep the focus your salah will be rewarded for that aspect of which you are conscious so if you are speaking if your mind has traveled out of salah then there is a problem because you have not maintained the boundaries of that space the boundaries of being in salah and i concluded last week by telling you that by focusing on that space that we pray entering into that zone that zone that has six boundaries left right back and forth under you and above you you're in you're entering into a new zone and that area that musalla itself has a consciousness of what you are doing on it and i told you several ahadith about the musalla the place where you pray cries it misses you when you die and we are told this and i didn't get to tell you about the response of the great mufassir the tabi'i mufassir mujahid who was asked about this and someone said to him you know that um atabki al ard that is does the earth actually cry and his response was wa ma lil ard la tabki ala abdin kana ya'muruha bi bil ruku' wa sujud that why would the earth not cry when that person when that servant of allah used to occupy it with prayer with sujood and rukur and prostrating and bowing that is what it celebrates and it misses that and then he then he says wa ma lis sama la tabki and what about and why would the sky not cry when 
is وما للسماء لا تبكي على عبد كان لتكبيره وتسبيحه فيها دوي كدوي النحل and what about the sky why would the sky not cry when it used to buzz with his takbir when he says Allahu Akbar and tasbih kadawiyin kadawiyin nahl it used to buzz like the buzzing of a beehive so when you say Allahu Akbar and and with sincerity and recognize the greatness of Allah in your heart it does not remain here on earth it travels above and it causes a, it, it, it resounds through the heavens one after the other uh, like the buzzing of a bee so the earth, the, the sky celebrates this and misses it when you die now today i want to continue this discussion about that zone and in regard to something that we are required to do once we have entered into that zone and that is the controlling of our eyes we are supposed to control the body as an, and as we said that we are using salah that salah is a model for behavior out of salah in salah you are in complete obedience to allah your your hands feet everything is involved in fulfilling the command of allah and so it is when you when you leave salah it is the model for your behavior in in all else in the dunya so the control of the eyes is also required in salah where do you put the eye because the eye is a gift from allah it is a bounty a great bounty that allah has given you but it is also sahmun masmumun min siham al iblis it is also a arrow of the arrows of shaitan a poisonous arrow so to learn to control that in salah gives you the opportunity to restrain it out of salah and so the first thing we have to learn recognize here is that it, when we are standing when we say allahu akbar the eye should not traverse it is very easy for the eye to traverse to go it is not allowed to, to look upwards it is not allowed to look left and right it has to be focused in front of you now there are some discussion about where exactly in this it should be whether it should be towards your towards you or towards the place of sujood the majority of opinion the jamhur yandur al musalli ila mawdi' sujoodihi that you look at the place your eyes should be fixated at the place where you prostrate that is the primary location for controlling the eyes now before i continue with this i want to say i want to talk a bit bro- a more a, a bit more broadly about the drift of the eye because controlling the drift of the eye is a requirement not only in salah but in our day to day lives Allah, and in the verse i read to you allah is addressing the believers and he's saying lower your gaze and why why is he saying that he's saying that because the eye derives enjoyment from looking at things it should not supposed to look at it looking at for men to look at women and for women to look at men and the and the ayah is both this is, and it it also speaks to al-mu'minat yaghdunna wa kull al-mu'minat yaghdunna min absarihim that tell the believing women also to lower their their gazes now we enjoy the comp- we human beings men and women enjoy each other by being in their proximity by being by through smell touch and sight so when you look at someone and derived en- en- enjoyment from them you are deriving enjoyment in a thing that is haram for you whether it is touch or looking it, when you are looking it falls under a category that includes the category of zina yes this is how dangerous it is it includes the category of zina for rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that zina 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 lil lisan and nutq that zina of the tongue is speaking about this activity wa zina al ain aw zina al aynain an nadhar and the zina the fornication of the eye is in the looking in looking at things because you when you derive as i said you derive enjoyment by touch and by looking so if you look at somebody else's wife you are deriving enjoyment and from someone else's wife from someone else's daughter who you are not allowed to, and you would not allow that you would not tolerate that for your own wife 
and for your own child. So you should not do that for someone else. So that is the general rule, but we have another problem today in our world. Is that the eye drift not only to looking at maharim, things that maharim Allah, things that Allah has made haram, that a person, a, a woman walking in the street, and nowadays it's the summer, and we're told further than that now in the tragedy we have in, in the world we live in, is the tragedy of the eye drifting even further into obscenity uh, as a result of the internet. And we, the, the entire world is plagued by this disease where the eye drifts into looking at things they're not supposed to look at, at obscenities. The obscenity is such that we are 7 billion human beings on the planet and every year 92 billion videos of obscenity is viewed. 92 billion. So that's enough for to, several times over for every human being. Young people between the ages of 11 and 16, 52% of them have been exposed to explicit images. Now these have severe consequences for the human being. In Islam, the ulama have written, and I'm, I've listed 10 of the things that, um, that they've listed about the consequences of this. When our eyes drift into these things, and it's very easy now, we are carrying devices in our pockets and late at night and in the bathroom and everywhere we, can, we are able, shaitan is able to draw our eyes into things that, that people 15, 20 years ago would not have access to. Now, what are the consequences? We see them and think that this doesn't have any consequences. It does. And severe consequences. And this is what I want to, I want to give you a short list. There's, there are longer lists, but I've, I've, but I've identified, I've, I've listed 10 that the ulama have written. He said, the first thing that happens, yud'iful iman. It weakens your iman. Your iman is your most valuable gift. And by looking at stuff, looking at in obscenity, explicit images, you, by looking at these things, you, are, you will weaken your iman, generally. And then the next thing is, yufsidul fitrah, number two. Yufsidul yuf fitrah, that it corrupts your nature. Because we weren't, Allah did not create, Allah created us with certain boundaries. We were designed for this. So if, if a naked person jumps in front of you, it will startle you, it will shock you. It will cause, it will, it will cause serious problems, I, 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 psychological problems, if you see it. Uh, suddenly, because you weren't meant to see this. We weren't meant to, to indulge in this kind of activity. So it corrupts your nature. It is against your nature. The second thing, the third thing is that نور البصيرة, that it, it destroys, it, it, it extinguishes the nur, the light of basira, the light of insight and perspicacity in a person. He's, he's unable to see things deep anymore, especially with, with the light of guidance. It, it goes. Number four, يمرض القلب. It, it makes, it causes diseases to sprout in the heart. يمرض القلب. Number five, ويذهب الخشوع. It, it eradicates khushu. Attention, your focus in salah, your humbleness in front of Allah goes. Because it's the shame of it and the corruption of the heart and the fitrah is such that one is unable to focus. The imprint, the disaster that is caused in your consciousness is such that it corrupts your khushur. It reduces your ability, your memory. It reduces memory and it reduces your mental capacity. You're not able to think properly. That you end up, as a result of all of these, you, have, you end up with physical illness, literal physical illness, which I will talk about in the other list. Then, وَيُقَرِّبُ إِلَى الزِّنَا And it also draws you closer towards zina. A person then, it becomes easy for a person to, to approach zina when, when, you, when you look at these images. وَيُقَرِّبَكَ إِلَى الزِّنَا That's number eight. Number nine is, يُمَلِّلْ وَيُشَوِّقْ إِلَى الْمَزِيدِ That it, it desensitizes you to this thing while at the same time encourages you to go more into it. So it is, it, is, it, is, it is like falling, it is a sl slippery slope that you will be desensitized to the one you have just seen. And then you want to see more and more and more. And you end up into a place where it destroys you. such, And then it causes psychological problems. Qalaq in the nafs. Depression. Depression for, because we weren't meant to derive enjoyment from 
from these aspects of our life, uh, in these ways. That is what the ulama have written. As about um, what I have another list, and I want to mention that list as well. In this list is the ones that psychologists have, have produced, and it's based on every one of these things that I'm going to mention here are based on solid research. That have conducted and they have concluded after studying the phenomena of people who are exposed to pornography. It says that the first is that the, a person becomes compulsive. They, they develop compulsive behavior. They, you'll find you doing things and not knowing why you're doing it. Like gambling. Like overeating. All of that. These are compulsive behavior. That's one of the things that happens. Another problem is that you end up with BDD. BDD is body dysmorphic disorder. What, it, what this means is that you no longer, you're no longer happy with your own body. A person, a Muslim is supposed to stand in front of the mirror and say what? Allahumma hassin khuluqi kama hassan khalqi. Oh Allah, beautify my conduct as you have beautified my body. Because we should all be happy that whatever Allah has given us of our body, that is what Allah meant for us. And we are happy. Oh Allah, as you have perfected for me my body, perfect for me my, my conduct. My character. That is what, that's the dua when a person looks in the mirror. When you indulge in these sorts of activities, you no longer value your own body because you have seen others and you are comparing yourself to other people's bodies which you are not supposed to see. You're not supposed to because you've been corrupted. So you end up with this and they, the, the long-term effects is the person, he can even, it can even go as far as the person seeking surgery to reconstruct their body as based on what they have seen. That's the other one. Another... Consequence of this is brain shrinkage. The prefrontal cortex is connected to the stereotum which has the ability in which your ability to make decisions is affected. How does it affect it? It affected by cutting you because there is shrinkage, a loss. You have a decrease in gray matter. And this has been studied and they've shown it to happen that your people who are indulged, people who spend time in looking at obscene images, there's a, a, there's a shrinkage in the brain. The next thing is that you will have marriage problems because the anticipate, you will have a, the, the, fant the fantasy of what you see in, uh, on the internet and what you expect in marriage then becomes a problem. And finally, you, have, you will have marriage problems generally and impotence is uh, uh, one of the consequences of that. That people suffer from impotence. And finally, divorce. Divorce rates are high among people who spend time on the internet with, with obscene images. So, as the ulama say, warned us about it, and we are seeing the consequences now from the research, this is the extent to which this can damage you. Allah did not give you your eyes for this. Allah gave us our eyes so that we can benefit from the world, benefit from the gifts that he has given us, and to reflect, to use our eyes. He says uh, in the Quran, قُلْ سِيرُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ فَانْدُرُوا Look, travel in the earth and look, look. كَيْفَ بَدَأَ الْخَلْقِ How he has created the earth, how he has created the khalq, the creation, and how he will recreate it. قُلْ سِيرُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ فَانْدُرُوا كَيْفَ كَانَ عَاقِبَةِ الْمُجْرِمِينَ Look, travel in the earth and see the consequences of those criminals, those people who have committed the crime of disobeying Allah. Look at that. that is, those were the things that you were supposed to. Control of the drift of the eye starts with salah. If you're salat, if you control your drift in the eye in salah, then you should know that Allah knows khainatil a'yun. We are supposed to be trained like Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in his salah. He was so keen to maintain his eyes that he had one day a robe, a, 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 a cloak, um, a, a, a blanket around him. And he took it and he said, خُذ, خُذ نمرتي وَأَعْطِنِي نمرتك. He said to Sahaba, look, take, take my, my cloak, take, take my, my, my scarf that I have and give me yours. I, I, I don't want this. And they said, he said to him, but أنت, that نمرتك أجود مني. That is better than, yours is much better than mine. And he said, no. He said, I don't want it. He said, I don't want it. Why? Because he said that 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 fiha khaytun ahmar that it has a red thread in it that this thing that I'm wearing has a red thread and fa khashitu an andura ilayha fataftinani an salati 
that my eye maybe may get stuck on this red thread in it and it might corrupt my salah. That is how keen Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was in, main, in avoiding the drift of the eye in salah. That if you learn that you need to control the drift of the eye, then in salah, then you will be able to control it out of salah. Because as we are saying is that life in salah should be, our life out of salah should be like our life in salah. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa made this absolutely clear to the Sahaba. Another time, a Sahaba gave him a nice robe, you know, khamisa, and he said to it, take it back to Abi Jaham, give, him, give it back to him, and bring me his old one. Because it had some stripes, it had some seams in it. And he said, I don't want this to destroy, I don't want this to distract me. That is how keen he was. As for the place, as I said, the place is to look when you're in salah to maintain that connection with the place of sujood. And we have proof for this. Sayyidatina Aisha radiallahu anhu told us that she, in fact, she complained when she saw people entering into the Kaaba and looking up to the roof. She said, what, what is this about these people looking up to the roof? That Rasulullah entered the Kaaba and he did not remove his eye from the place of sujood. And now we have people climbing the Kaaba in this respect. Sayyidina, and using Sayyidina Bilal's uh, example, Sayyidina Bilal went to, do, to sing the praise of Allah. He did not go for sightseeing. Now, the, the connection between attention and the sight is important to recognize is that for you to build khushu, you need to control the eye. Because attention is a vital and crucial skill in life. Children who do not have long attention span do not, do not study in, in mad. They do not acquire education. If, if your attention span is short and you cannot concentrate on your work, then you do not gain an education. A person, a person who is a worker who does not pay attention to his work, then he will eventually he will quickly lose his job. A driver who does not pay attention to the road that he is driving on, he will end up in an accident. And the husband who does not pay attention to his wife will end up in a divorce, will lose his wife. And likewise, for a, for a wife who does not pay attention to her husband. So pay attention, paying attention is a vital skill that we need to learn. And this is, we can benefit from that, we can benefit in the, in, in the learning of attention. You know, there are lots of well-being courses now uh, advertised. If you look around, you will see, not well, uh, um, uh, uh, mindfulness courses. And I looked at one of them, and the main, the main activity they are telling people is that you should sit in a place and, and point and look at one, at one particular position, one, uh, look at, fix your gaze on something and keep it fixed in order to learn attention. 1400 years ago, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa taught us this. That if you want to learn attention, if you want to build the ability to have khushu and learn attention, then this is what you need to do. And the benefits for this are amazing. The benefits will turn things around. For a person who does this, what does Allah give? You know, nowadays people tell me, you know, um, ibadat me dil ni lag raha. You know, I don't, I'm, I'm not feeling the, um, the heart is in, when I do ibadah, I don't enjoy it. When I, when I pray to Allah, I don't feel like my heart is in it. That is because our eyes and we have suffered, we are, we are having trouble. And one of the benefits of controlling the eye is that Allah will give you sweetness in your ibadah. And I'm, I'm going to read the hadith. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, مَا مِن مُسْلِمٍ يَنْظُرُ إِلَى مَحَاسِنِ إِمْرَأَةٍ أَوَّلَ مَرَّةٍ ثُمَّ يَغُضُّ بَصَرَهُ That whenever a person, happen, his, ha his eyes happen to land on the beauty of a woman who he's not supposed to look at, and he quickly removes it, Makhafati, and he does so in for fear of me. Then illa akhlaf Allah lahu ibadatan yajidu halawataha. That the reward for that, the consequence of that, that what will follow is that Allah will grant him ibadah. He will grant him worship that he will enjoy. That he such worship that he will start to taste the beauty of that of that worship. So by Doing the opposite, you can see that you will lose the taste of your ibadah. You will not enjoy it. So if you want your ibadah to increase in value, you, for you to enjoy your prayer, enjoy your dhikr, enjoy your ibadah, your, your relationship with Allah, then practice this. Try it. When your eyes, because you're not taken to task for the first glance. If, you, if, your, hand, if your eyes land accidentally on someone that you're not supposed to look at or on something and you move it away, Allah. 
You move it away fearing Allah, knowing that Allah ya'lamu khainatil a'yun, that he knows the, the treachery of the eye, which is the fastest treachery. If Allah, that Allah knows this and Allah is seeing me. Yes, no one in the room may see me. No one around me may see me, but Allah knows. If for the fear of Allah you have turned your eye, then the reward for that is, first of all, is that Allah will give you sweetness in your ibadah. You will start to taste the sweetness in your ibadah. When you do, when you do dhikr, when you pray, you will feel, you will feel that sweetness of the ibadah in your heart. And the second thing is the hadith that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Kullu aynin baqiyatun yawm al qiyamah That every eye will cry on the day of judgment. Illa aynan ghaddat an maharim illahi Except that all the eyes will cry except the eye that lowered itself in the fear of Allah. Wa aynan sahirat fi sabili Allah. And the eye that stayed awake in the path of Allah. وَعَيْنًا خَرَجَ مِنْهَا مِثْلُ رَأْسِ الذُّبَابِ مِنْ خَشْيَةِ اللَّهِ And the eye from which a drop of tear flows out from the fear of Allah. When we are alone at night and we remember our sins and we think about ascending in front of Allah and that drop of tear comes out, that will grant us shade on the Day of Judgment. Allah will enter us into His shade. Because of that one drop, like the head of a fly, that pours out of our eye, thinking, Oh Allah, forgive me. May Allah forgive us and grant us control of our eyes. In salah, so that we can control it. Out of salah, and protect us from these obscenities that are that around which we, that we have on our devices and, surrounded, and are surrounded by. And protect our children from this. Let us not be as parents facilitating this paying the, the monthly subscription for the corruption of the heart and the fitra of our children. Make, take a stand. It is ir irresponsible parenting for you to do this just because you have come under pressure where, the, where we are told that because all the other children have it. If all the other children are falling off the cliff, we should not make that decision to push our children off the cliff. May Allah protect us and protect our children. Wa jazakumullahu khaira. Wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa تبارك الله